How do you feel about your fit in Greg Williams' defense? I feel like I do a good job. Um, you know, whatever position they want to, you know, put me in, I feel like I, I, I definitely do a good job. We have some good talent in the room. Um, so I'm just making sure I know, you know, both the Mike and the Will position. So um, just, just uh, whenever, whatever position they they want to use me at, you know, I'll be willing to work at it. But I feel like I do a good job. I feel like I was, I was starting to get really comfortable at the Will, the Will position last year, um, prior to my injury, and um, I feel like I will pick pick right up where I left off. Avery, how much of a significant blow is it when you lose a C.J. Mosley? Obviously, I know you guys were looking forward to working together last year before you got hurt, but uh, you know, for him to not be around this year, uh, how difficult will it be to overcome his loss? Yeah, it definitely. It was. I mean, I hated to hear it. You know, I was really excited to um, to be able to play with him this year, and um, you know, being that both of us were out last year. Um, but you know. At the end of the day, you know, I'm, I'm um, just hoping that, you know, whatever he's going through, you know, he's going to be good and um, be ready to go next year. Um, but, um, you know, definitely definitely was, ups, little, you know, upset about it. But I'm supporting my guy. And uh, it's just the next man up mentality. You know, we got got guys in the room that can play, the, you know, play linebacker. And uh, it showed last year, you know, when me and him went down, you know, had guys step up. Never you with James Burgess. Uh, Harvey Lange, you know, a lot of guys that stepped up and did a good job. So uh, I feel like I feel like um, we'll ha still have a good room. Hey, Avery, the outside perception is that the defense, you know, you traded Jamal, and then a week later, CJ opts out, and so the outside noise is that you know the Jets' defense is is basically in trouble this year. What's the internal vibe on how you can overcome these losses? Well, I mean. <laughs> It's just the next man up mentality, you know. Um, we definitely got some. We definitely got some good talent on the team, and uh, we just gotta. We just gotta pick up where we left off. You know, I feel like uh, Greg Williams. He does a, a good job of piecing piecing things together. You know, after last year, you know, it was just kind of like a, a cluster of injuries. You know, had to piece different guys in different places, and you know, somehow, some way, they made it work. So um, it definitely is. It's, I hate to see, you know, you know, see Jamal go and, and CJ opt out, but uh, at the end of the day, you know, we still got some some talented guys, you know, that that can play those positions as well. So um I feel like Greg Williams is gonna put guys in good positions. He's just gonna coach the hell out of them. Can you talk about the uh roller coaster of emotions for you? Because there's been so much speculation in the offseason that you know, that you would be a, a, cap, a cap casualty. I'm sure you heard about all that stuff. And so now it, it seems like it's gone in the other direction. You know, now they're really leaning on you. They need you. So just talk about the whole whirlwind of emotions. Did you ever think that you were in danger of, you know, being released? I mean, in, in this business, you never know what could happen. So um, I try to just ignore, ignore the noise and just keep on working, um, just trying to stay focused. It's kind of hard when you don't have anything to do during quarantine. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, it's it definitely, you know, it's, you, you, you just never know in this business what could happen. I mean, nobody, nobody uh, figured that, you know, CJ will opt out. You know, I hate to see it happen, but um, um, just never know what could happen in this business. You never know who you might need. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, it just, it's it definitely, it definitely was a, uh, um, Kind of crazy how it all worked out, but you know now I'm just making sure that I'm, I'll be 100% for the season, and you um, know, you know, I just want to be a part of this defense and uh, be a, a leader on this defense and uh, help this team get some victories. Avery, we spoke to Coach Gase earlier, and he was talking about how he's excited personally to see you finally get out there. You know, at some point soon. Um, you know, and he, he talked about, he reiterated that he felt that he made a mistake keeping you out. Now, I know it's a year ago, but what was those, what were those conversations like? Did you have to have those conversations with him? You know, the fact that he made a decision and it basically cost you the season. And, you know, what what was that like? And he said he's talked to you a lot, you know, since then. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he definitely talked to me since, since that injury quite a few times. And, I mean, it definitely makes you feel better. I mean... You know, it's, it's, it's a lot of frustration that came with that, you know, the injury, um, because I was definitely excited for, you know, 
to I was excited to play last season. Coming off of my you know my first year with the Jazz, big season, and I'm ready to go into my second year with them. Like I uh, feel like I was getting a grasp of the defense, and then you know ACL. You know it was it was um, you know crazy how it happened. Um, you know, but at the end of the day, uh, if you hold on to stuff like that, it's just gonna it's just gonna eat away at you. And I, I had my moments where I was you know some some dark places and. You know, didn't want to talk to anybody and stuff, but um, I feel like I've moved past it and, and just the fact that I'm running and stuff and able to move and, you know, closer to being on the field, um, you know, that's that's the happiness that I, that I want to have. So that that makes me feel good. So, um, and they, Coach Gates, he definitely, um, he you know, he he's he's told me a million times, you know, he, you know, he hate, hated that it happened. And um, shoot, I'm I'm over it now. I just at this point, man, I'm just ready to work. Just go out there and just and just show that I've um, I'm back where I was last year and and, and ready to take a, um, the next step at being even better than last year. Avery, can you talk about the logistics of what you guys are going through now? You know, having to get tested every day and and how confident are you? Do you feel safe in the building? Or and how confident are you that? there's going to be a complete football season this year. Yeah, it's definitely uh, different. It's definitely a lot different over there. I mean, um, just, uh, you know, the fact that, you know, just getting tested every day, going to get tested, kind of getting used to that now. But, uh, um, you know, not being able to socialize with everybody, you got different groups. Um, you know, it's just – it's uh, definitely a whole lot different, you know. Um, you know, just used to – used to staying in the building – um, during camp and, you know, being there all the time, it, it just kind of doesn't feel like camp, feel like we're in OTAs. So it's definitely, it's, it's, it's been taking some getting used to. Uh, but, you know, overall, we just going to have to just adjust. And, and um, they've been doing a good job over there, of, I feel like, of, of uh, keeping us safe uh, with the testing, you know, having, just having um, certain, like, certain number of guys in the building at, at certain times. And um, just, they're trying to do all the little things, what making us wear masks, um, cleaning, so um, they're doing a good job over there, and uh, we just have to make sure we're doing our parts when we, we leave the building. But um, you know, just you never know what can happen with the season. That's just something, um, un, you know, un, uncharted territory. So we just have to wait. I mean, it could be an outbreak that happens on a team in October. You know, we might play a full season. You just never know. So you, you can't control what everybody else is doing. I don't know what the 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 um the Rams are doing or the Buffalo Bills are doing. So uh you just gotta control um what you what you can control and that's your team. Avery along those lines, what is your level of confidence that guys across the league will be disciplined to, you know, to make sure they're in the not in the wrong spots and wrong places uh throughout the course of you know seventeen, eighteen weeks? Well, I mean, as you know, I mean, it's a lot of guys in this, in this league um, and a lot of guys, a lot of stupid stuff. So, <laughs> it's, you know, it's just – I feel like it's definitely tough to um, – it's going to be tough for guys to do the right thing the whole year. <laughs> this is my opinion. Um, hopefully, um, it's a lot of, you know, guys police, you know, each other. But um, I feel like it's going to be tough. I mean, you see what happen, what's happening in the baseball – um, so, uh, that's a different scenario because we don't go to city and stay for, you know, four or five days. But, uh, I mean, I just, the problem is just like, you know, guys are used to going out and doing, doing what they want to do. So some cities are different than others. Like Atlanta's, they, they don't have, it's wide open down there. So, you know, just never know what people are doing. So, um, it's going to take some maturity, maturity for guys to, to be smart and, and not, you know, party and, and try to keep to themselves. What if what we, is how the day Charles? Uh, I'd love to ask. You mentioned uh before that you like or you were getting comfortable at the uh weak side linebacker spot. What about your skill set makes you such a good fit there versus Mike where CJ was playing? Well, um I just feel like I mean it, both the positions are interchangeable. Um I just feel like, I mean, I was just kind of getting, you know, getting a, a comfort for it and, and um, really just uh, just was 
just kind of just getting a good feel for it, man. Like playing the um, playing like the in the in the passing game, I feel like I was kind of getting more of a grasp of covering tight ends and things like that. Um, and just was starting to feel a lot more comfortable and playing faster. Um, but um, you know, these the Mike and the Will they're both interchangeable. So I mean, it's, it's some differences in the two, but uh, you know, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm making sure I'm, I'm learning both of them. And um, just want to, you know, be as familiar with, with Mike and Will as possible in case I need to play both. Take a few more for Avery. Avery, did you have a clean ACL tear or did you have some meniscus issues? Uh, no, I was just a uh, clean ACL. Avery, what was your <laughs> Avery, what was your reaction to everything that went down with Jamal uh, over the last few months and then ending with the trade? Uh, yeah, I definitely was – I wasn't um, expecting it to end in a trade. Um, definitely thought they might get something worked out. I mean, hate to see him go. I mean, he's definitely, you know, he's an amazing player. Um, I know he was upset because he wanted to get, you know, get his payday here. But, um, you know, uh, it just was – just was uh, – couldn't get on the same page, I guess, both parties. But, um, you know, I, I hate to see him go. He definitely was um, a big part of his defense. And this team, and um, hate to see him go, but um, I mean, also happy, you know, you know that he, you know that he's happy, and um, I feel like he's going to do great things out in Seattle. Avery, with the quarantine and you rehabbing, how did that affect like the whole process for you um, in terms? Because you were right in the middle, of probably of still trying to get to the point where you're at now. What was that like for you as a rehabbing player to deal with quarantine and trying to figure out what to do and where to go? Yeah, well, I was in I was in Birmingham, Alabama, so uh, it wasn't as bad down there when it first happened in March. It got kind of, it got worse, you know, later in the summer. But uh, I mean, the biggest thing was just um, mentally being by myself and not having a social life. Um, I wasn't going to see my family because I didn't want to get my parents sick, take a chance on that or anything. So the biggest thing was just being by myself and kind of just doing the same thing over every day which it was terrible. So, uh, you know, I mean, my routine didn't change. My gym closed down for like a couple of weeks. But uh, other than that, my therapy was open. Um, but yeah, just, just the same thing every day was just, that was what was mentally, mentally just killing me.